Welcome to Tesla Info and today we're going to explain why not all superchargers are the same in Europe and why you need to know. To find superchargers there's a couple of ways one is through the car another is through the app simply go to where the car location is it brings up a map click on charges and then you'll see as you scroll around charges appearing on the screen. These are the two nearest to us and you can see they have a maximum of 130 kilowatts and the first one has seven of the eight chargers there available. You might notice in other locations they have slightly different figures. For instance this one has 130 kilowatts but on the other side of the motorway it's actually saying 150 kilowatts. We're now going to zoom around a little bit more and find a different one and this time it's got a maximum of 250 kilowatts. So let's just go through this screen. It's got 31 of the 36 doors are available. Uh, one of them is out of order. It tells you the price information as it changes over time. And it also shows you the popularity of that site. The popularity is useful because it tells you when you're most likely to get blocked or have to wait uh, and other times when it's going to be very easy to get on. What it doesn't explain, however, is some of those stalls have a different power rating to others. So depending which one you use, you get a different maximum speed. Identifying an individual supercharger stall and what type it is is really important. So let's start with the V2 ones. And these have two handles on each unit, as you can see. They're also numbered 4A, 4B, 5A, 5B, etc. They're effectively in pairs. With V2 chargers, it's important to understand that if you are sharing a car on a pair, your maximum power is halved. So when we get to a supercharger location with V2s, we scan the cars that are parked, break them into twos, and we try and find a pair where there are no cars currently sitting. So in this example, you can see there's a gap between the two cars, so both will get the maximum amount of power their car can take. The other thing to look out for is sites which have a mixture of V2 and V3 chargers. These cars are on V2 chargers when there are actually V3 chargers available. Generally, you will get a faster charge if you can go on a V3 charger for a number of reasons which we'll talk about. Visually, the only difference between a V2 and a V3 charger is the V3 chargers only have a single cable. It also has a maximum charge rate of 250 kilowatts, which is much higher. And while technically it does share power, because it spreads it across four bays, this is rarely an issue. Finally, let's take a look at the new V4 superchargers, and these have a very different appearance. They also have technically a much higher charge rate, although for Teslas, they're the same as V3. They also have a little screen and an ability to do contactless payment. Again, the power is shared with up to four cabinets, but because of the availability, it's really a problem. All Tesla superchargers use the CCS standard, um, which can also now be used by other makes of car. Not all V2 and V3 chargers have been opened up, but all V4 ones have. On this location, there's a mixture of V3 and V4 chargers, and you can see on the V4 chargers, there are cars of a different make. What you sometimes get, even on the V4 chargers with the longer cables, is a car will use the charger on the opposite side to the one you'd expect, effectively blocking two bays. So there's only really one message. When you're arriving at a supercharger site, try and pick a V3 or a V4 charge with a single cable. And if you have to pick a V2 charger, try not to share with a car next to you. A quick word on the information seen when you're charging. The first figure is the current power rate, which is 58 kilowatts, and that can be up to 250 kilowatts when the car is at a low state of charge. The second figure is similar in terms of how many miles per hour have been added, and the third figure is how many miles have been added. You get slightly different figures if you're showing percentage and not miles range. The other piece of information on the screen is effectively the costs. So this tells you we've added 26 kilowatt hours at 35 pence per kilowatt hour, which gives us a total of nine pounds and 10 pence. So superchargers in different countries are different. The US are different to uh, Europe. But if you are heading to a supercharger in your new Tesla, make sure you look for the v3 or v4 chargers if they're on that site because as sites have expanded there seems to be more of a mixed bag anyway hope that's been useful and catch you next time